Hi folks, it's Evo here from Thundermist Lure Company and welcome to today's episode of Thundermist Fishing Tips. We got an exciting day planned today. It's early morning, uh, just past the crack of dawn here and we're looking for carp today. We're fishing Lions Creek and the beauty of fishing for carp, it's not a difficult thing to do and you can get some really big fish. So stay tuned folks, we're sure to have a great show. So what we're going to use today folks, we're going to use uh, corn. I just went to a local grocery store and I bought some frozen corn. And what we're going to do, I'm going to chum the area with corn first and I'll show you the setup how we're going to fish. But I got a handful here and I'm just going to toss it fairly close to shore. You can see here where there's some, uh, there's some weeds here and uh, you can see some lily pads and I'm going to toss it right in. There's a good chum spot right there. It's right in the corner of that uh, little bend in the weeds and it's close to the weeds and the carp are feeding, they're feeding in amongst those weeds and that's where I want my bait. I don't want it out in the middle of the creek. I want it right close to that weed bed. Now I'm gonna load up and I'll uh, show you my setup. So I'll take a minute here and show you my setup. I've got the uh, Thundermiss T-Turn Swivel here and this swivel is actually uh, absolutely key for carp fish and I'll explain why. And I go down about six inches to a sinker and then you can see here I've got about oh two feet of line and I'm running to a little two hook gang setup here and I'll explain that to you as well. The T-Turn Swivel is key because it allows me to fish tangle free. And uh, it doesn't matter what those carp do. And I'll tell you right now, they twist, they turn, they tangle. Without uh, the T-turn swivel or a three-way swivel uh, of this nature, absorbing that tangle, you'll end up with a ton of line twists. So this is gonna prevent that. The two hook setup. The top hook is just a, a regular hook. The bottom hook is actually a bait holder hook. And that's the hook I'm going to load up with corn. And all I'm gonna do is poke the corn through and I'm going to load it up as much as I possibly can. I've already chummed the area with corn as you saw and now I'm going to just load this little bait holder hook up. I can get another piece on there I think. Maybe even one more. Perfect. Ah, a little more chum. Okay there's my setup right there. And for those of you who fish for carp there's a, a, a boilie rig that is similar called a hair rig actually where uh, the line comes down to another line and you put a boilie on there as bait and then the hook sits above it. It's the same setup except I'm using a two hook instead. So what happens is the carp will take that corn and if they don't like it or they sense something they go to spit out, it's the top hook that actually will hook the carp. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just toss my line into that area I chummed. Right there. And now it's just a matter of uh, putting my ride, rod down. I'm in tight quarters here, but I'm going to put my rod down and I'm going to keep my line loose. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep an eye on my line. And when I see my line starting to tighten, that's when I'm going to set the hook. So I'm, by, by using that loose line method, there's no resistance on the line, no resistance to the fish, and you can really detect very easily when you got a bite. So now we're just going to sit and wait. So as I'm waiting for a bite, I just want to share a couple more uh, things with you here with regards to my setup. Uh, the line I'm using is 20 pound test line. It's monofilament. It's a nice heavy line and that's why I've got a bait casting reel because heavy line on a spinning reel doesn't work well. Uh, unless of course you use braid which is thinner. So I've got a nice heavy line set up and my drag right now is set uh, not tight but not loose, just kind of snug. Because when you first set the hook on these carp, they're going to run. And if, you're, uh, if your drag is really tight, all they'll do is snap your line and it'll snap instantly even though you've got a heavier uh, heavier rig set up. They're a really strong and powerful fish. So by having my setup like that, um, once I'm fighting the fish then of course I can tighten up on the drag. And carp's mouths are, they're, they're not like a bass, uh, they're a little more uh, delicate let's say. So you got to be careful you don't want to rip the hook through, uh, through the carp's mouth either. So a couple of little things there to keep in mind when you're setting up for carp. <laughs> I just saw my line starting to tighten up. It's not a big fish. I just kind of eased into him. And boy, oh boy, that didn't take long. Oh, it's, a, it's not a bad fish. It's a nice carp. They get a lot bigger. Oh, there he is right there. Oh, oh look at that. He come right to shore. He doesn't realize it, but he's right here. Oh, he just, he's caught up in the weeds. Oh, there he goes. 
Can you imagine that? He swam right up to the shoreline, and now he's caught in these weeds. Oh. Let's see if I can land them here with my little net. There we go. In the bag. Whoa. That's a nice carp. Nice way to start my day. Oh, there we go. I got the hook out. And look at his tail there. These fish are spawning. That tail is really beat up. Uh, this must be a post-spawn fish right here who's on the feed. We're going to get him back in. Ah, he's a, probably about uh, an 8-pounder, maybe 10. He's pretty thick. So, actually, let's get him right back from where he came. There he goes. And uh, usually they fight a little longer and stronger than that, but this guy, for some reason, swam right to the shoreline. And, oh, by the way, as I mentioned about that, if I can get my line out of the weeds here, again, that T-turn swivel, folks, if you've never used it, it's absolutely essential. The reason it's so uh, effective is because the middle swivel on this three-way always wants, come, wants to come back to that middle position. So it's constantly, constantly keeping me tangle free. So what I'm going to do, honestly, that was about 10 minutes. I'm going to bait this line back up. Maybe I'll chum a little more in case that guy ate some of that corn and uh, get right back at it. And also, the reason for the chum, carp are going to come around as they're feeding, and what they like to do, they like to feed in the weeds because they're feeling, uh, feeding on little bugs and snails and that sort of thing. So um, they're always going to be close to that weed bed. So I've chummed the area close to the weed bed. That chum, they're going to start feeding on the corn. That'll keep them in the area longer and hopefully they'll find the corn that's on the end of my hook. So that's the reason for the chum. And if you're fishing again, that's the reason why I've chummed close to the weeds. <laughs> that guy just picked up my line and he just bolted. And he's still bolting and peeling dragon. You know what? It, I took oh, I took a quick look at him. It's not even a real big one. Oh, oh. I gotta tighten up my drag here a bit. Oh, he's peeling again. He's right hanging out right in those weeds out there. Oh, oh, he's buried in the weeds now. Oh. Here he comes. There we go. I got him out of the weeds there a bit. It's not even a big fish. Oh, he's buried in the weeds now. Oh. Let's see if I can. Look at this. Just a little carp, too. He's buried in weeds. He gave me a nice little run. Okay. Look at the weeds here. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's get him off here. Oh yeah. Oh, there's another one right beside him. Did you see that? There was another carp came up here right beside him. That's about half the size of the other one I just caught. But boy, oh boy, did he give me a fight until he got hung up in those weeds and then I just kind of pulled him in. But I could tell, that's why in, in Europe this is such a, an exciting sport and in North America it's picking up even a lot more so. He wants to go, goodbye Mr. Carp. But that was really something. Carp fishing is growing in popularity. You can catch nice sized fish. They give you a great fight, readily available. I'm just parked here on the side of the road. Uh, I've got a bridge here that i got to watch they don't run under but this is just phenomenal fishing. And I don't know what happened there, but there was another big carp that came in right behind them and just kind of swam off. So I got to get my line back out there. I'm going to throw a little more chum in case he ate my chum. I'll throw some more chum out there and drop my line back out. We hooked into another one. I just chummed the area a little bit more. And this guy's going for a run. He doesn't feel, again, feels about the same size as those other two. Uh-oh, he's going under the bridge. I got to be careful now. Oh yeah. Oh, actually, he feels pretty strong. Keep him out from under that bridge. Oh, I just lost him. I tried to muscle him in, and you know what? Look at that. Broke my line right off. 30-pound fluorocarbon leader, just like nothing, gone. <sighs> I shouldn't have tried to muscle him, but I had to keep him from going from under that bridge. It's okay. I'll retie. Another one that's heading under the bridge. I'm not going to muscle him this time. Oh, I'll let him take drag. You know, that last one I had, I thought it was a smaller one. 
but obviously not with 20 pound test line and that 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. I must have had a dandy on there to break that 30 pound test line. Now this one doesn't feel as big as the last one, but he's sure he's going all over the place, but I'm glad he's not under that bridge. Oh, there he is there. Oh, there he is there. Again, I can't really muscle him, folks, or he'll break me off, even though he's not, not that big. But they are really strong. Okay. Oh. I don't want to lose him. There we go, right in my nice little landing bed. Beauty. Nice little hook set. He doesn't want to be doesn't want to be touched. Oh, there we go. There's a release. Just came off. See if I can get him. A quick peek at him. There we go. Not a bad sized carp right there. Again, I'm gonna say he's about uh, he's about 10 pounds. Let's get him back in. Whoa! Okay. There he goes. And that's the excitement of this carp fishing. You never know how big they're gonna get. Could be a 10 pounder, 20 pounder, there's 30, 40 pounders in here, it's so exciting. Oh, well the sun is upon us. We're going to give it a little while yet here, but I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Thunderous Fishing Tips. And if you haven't yet, folks, feel free to subscribe. We welcome you to subscribe to our channel. There's probably a button right over here. We welcome you as a, as a subscriber. And thanks very much. So thanks so much for tuning in to today's episode. We're going to keep going at it here and uh, looks like we're in for a great day. So thanks for tuning in and until next time, as always, good luck and good fishing.